everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for hanging out through the, the beginning and launching of this sort of awkward vlog of mine. Uh, anyway, uh, I was kind of debating on what I would uh, talk about today and what I'd you know, kind of show you all as far as something interesting, informational, and I wasn't really sure what to do. And then I looked down, I was like, well, I already talked about feeding last week, we kind of went over that, but what I didn't talk about is converting some potentially picky feeders from mice to rats. So, um, for me, I will start carpet pythons off on you know, like fuzzies or small hoppers typically. So this girl right here is one of my striped jungles from last season, um, from that maternal incubation clutch, and uh, started her off on frozen thawed fuzzy mice, which worked perfectly. They took them right away, um, and we can do you know a whole maternal incubation video another time. But um, yeah, this girl started out on frozen thawed right away and as she gets older the plan will be once she's eating adult mice to start transitioning her into eating rat pups so when that time comes she's gonna need to learn that this funny smelling rodent is actually uh, food as well if you've ever this is probably going to sound weird to folks who aren't involved in this level of keeping, but if you've ever thawed rats and mice out, um, they do smell very differently. And the snakes have much better sense of smell than we do. So, I've actually got some animals that are in the process of uh, switching over. And last week offered them a rat pup, and as expected... They both instinctually grabbed, struck, wrapped, and then let go as like, what the heck did you just give me? What is this trickery? So, I'll show you what I'm going to do this week to help kind of convince them. But basically, I have two Popwin carpets that are at that size where they're eating adult mice. Um, and I want them to start making the switch to rats here. Um just a little bit more of a calorically different compound when you're dealing with equivalent size rats to mice. A little more fat content differences, the ratios of proteins different. Anyway, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about here, but they definitely know the difference. So, completely fresh rat pup, they weren't having it. Sometimes I'll have animals take it right away that have fantastic appetites and just don't care. But what I have found to be the most successful way for me to scent and really help them make that switch is thawing rats and mice in the same bag. So there's rat pups in here and as they thaw today they are going to sort of cross scent with these mice and the mice will probably have that as well. Um, and what I'm trying to do is play some mind games with the snake to think, okay, it's hot, it's got the same signature as a rodent familiar prey item. It smells a little funny, but there's that familiar mouse scent. I think I'll give it a try. And so that's what I'm going to do. And typically what I find is if they're hesitant, they'll grab it and wrap it and let it go. And then I gotta do it again later, reheat it, reinvigorate it. And sometimes, you know, they just take a few tries and I bet you in a few weeks time they'll be good to go eating rats no problem and then starting to really see some growth change and increase so that's what I'm going to be doing today um, amongst all the feedings so everyone's going to get sort of their normal routine of feeding for those who are eating this week because uh, I don't feed everyone every week um, I kind of tinker it to you know colubrid versus pythons versus breeding you know what time of year it is um, what is that individual's behavior like? So for animals that ate last week that eat large meals, they're not going to eat for a few weeks. Animals that are still young and growing with fast metabolisms will probably get a meal this week. Um, and uh, another thing I like to do is with my Kribos. Um, the hog knows are hit or miss about it, but with some of the other species, I'll use some, some chicks. 
Um, occasionally I can grab quail as, as well. And with those animals, I like to give them a good variety of uh, prey items. There's been studies on indigos in the wild eating, you know, dozens of different types of food from lizards, frogs, snakes, fish, to rodents, to birds, whatever. So, obviously rodents are the most readily available and sort of an industry staple. Um, but with the Kribos in particular, I do like to switch it up, give them any deceased baby snakes that don't make it, um, chicks, quail, rats, mice, the size vary variation, um, all of the above. They're not picky. They will eat it. Um, I can even get like the grocery store, um, like chicken hearts and livers and gizzards and things, and they'll eat those up too. So that's what's going on today. I'm going to do some feeding and, uh, I'm not going to show any of the, the feeding. I don't like to film feeding, but I figured, um, talking about how I do some scenting tricks, uh, might be worthwhile for the viewers watching here. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of all I got for you today. Um, I guess, you know, this is a pretty short one. Um, there's a lot of craziness going on with coronavirus and being locked down and this and that. And, uh, yeah, for now I'm still working, but who knows, uh, how long that'll last. So I hope everyone out there is staying safe, getting to, uh, to enjoy their animals. Uh, if you missed last week's vlog, we pulled a clutch from, from this girl. And she's actually going to be getting her first meal back. So, she's just been resting and hanging out. Not doing a whole heck of a lot. So, she's going to get offered a meal. I don't know if she will take it. We'll see. So, um... But yeah, she she's doing really well after laying that clutch of eggs. The eggs are looking perfect. Um, we got her cleaned up and this tub all cleaned up and everything. And uh, yeah, now that she's not gravid, I can give some of her enclosure furniture back so she you know doesn't have to maximize as much space as possible with a full belly of eggs. Um, but yeah, and actually while I'm thinking it, this paper. Y'all need it. It's the good stuff. I've made a video on it before. I've actually made a couple videos on bedding, and I tend to go back and forth about like uh, particulate bedding, and depending on the species, I still use particulate. But for animals that aren't necessarily burrowers or don't need like crazy high levels of humidity, this paper stuff is my favorite. As you can see, it gets wet. It, uh, it's very absorbent and it doesn't mold so it can help uh, kick up the humidity in here it's also kind of tough so they can't move it around as much obviously she's under the paper so they can still use it as a hide and you can do a couple layers and fold it over and create hides and whatnot but this stuff is really good because if you're in an area where I'm at like where I'm at that has relatively dry air this will help with humidity challenges if you've got an animal who's getting you know, stuck shed. This will help really nicely. Um, you can spray it down. It does evaporate and dry eventually, but it's not going to mold in the meantime. And it's got some texture, so if you're worried about your animals getting lazy and just kind of slipping and sliding around on like newspaper or something, this has a little more texture to it. So I actually really like that. Um, just all around a little bit better. And this is uh, this is a, a shameless plug for my friend Ed Villardo who has been killing it with this paper. That business is going to grow. Um, there are plenty of folks out there who are catching on to this. He doesn't sponsor or endorse me at all. He's actually a good friend of mine. And uh, during these crazy times, uh, I make an extra point to buy from him. I, I have been buying this paper from Ed at CMC Reptiles for a little while now, and uh, I don't see myself stopping. I really enjoy it. It works with a lot of animals. Um, I've even been putting it in other tubs and trying it with new species lately. So if you're not happy with your bedding choice or you're sick of seeing newspapers staining your animals or they spill water on it, you know that ink is super gnarly. Um, that's like cancer causing gnarly ink. So after I learned all about that, it's just no more putting my snakes on newspaper. I don't care. I'd rather put them on a blank empty tub before I put them back on newspaper. 
So I don't know if it has like greater applications. You know, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. Ed was over the other day dropping off the paper and uh, we were talking about all the future applications and what it can do and what he's going to try and do with it in the future stamp some logos, make some hides, things like that. So it's really going to grow. But if you've got animals that are kind of finicky about food or shedding or just whatever, you need to try this paper at least to eliminate the variable that it's betting that might be throwing them off. Because if you put this in there and they really enjoy it and then they still don't eat, you, you got a little bit more insight into what may or may not be going on. Um, the other thing is, is if you've got animals that need high humidity, but... Um, you're concerned about particulate bedding and lots of surface area having the potential for lots of bacteria growth, um, which is very true. This stuff allows you to keep humidity up, uh, not have to worry about mold growth and things like that. I actually really do uh, enjoy the coconut substrates for a lot of animals. Um, I still use it quite heavily. And uh, this Madagascar giant hognose baby recently got an upgrade to a big girl tub and uh, I like to give her this bedding because she likes to use it burrow all sorts of stuff the adults have it up there um, but I have to keep an eye on it I have to make sure it doesn't mold I have to make sure there's enough ventilation in the tubs and clean it out accordingly um, so there's pros and cons to both but just throwing it out there if you're sick of bedding you need that paper um, look up Ed from CMC reptiles um, it's really that easy to get a hold of them. So, anyway, that was a shameless plug for Ed. Showed you some feeder stuff. Threw a couple animals up in here, so it's not just me rambling for a good 12 minutes like it always is. But if you're watching, and this is, what, episode 5? You probably don't mind me rambling that much anyway. So, uh, if you're one of those people, I appreciate the love and support. Thank you for hanging out, um, tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell for those notifications. Drop a comment. Let me know what you want me to show off. If you know that I have certain species or you want to see how I keep them, things like that, let me know. I've got plenty to show off in here and uh, lots of time to do it. So I'd like to keep this running. This is, you know, growing. It's becoming fun. So uh, let's keep the fun alive during these crazy times. Anyway, stay safe out there. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, wash your hands, social distance, and love peace and chicken grease.